the essential divide that runs all around the world and throughout history is once again thrown into stark relief. It is the divide between those whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule over others, and those people and nations who want only to rule themselves. I have the immense privilege of addressing you today as the elected leader of a nation that prizes liberty, independence, and self-government above all. The United States, after having spent over two and a half trillion dollars since my election to completely rebuild our great military, is also by far the world's most powerful nation. Hopefully, it will never have to use this power. Americans know that in a world where others seek conquest and domination, our nation must be strong in wealth, in might, and in spirit. We're going to bring our great soldiers back home where they belong. We don't have to fight these endless wars. We're bringing them back home. That's what I want on. And some people, whether it you call it the military-industrial complex or, or beyond that, they'd like me to stay. One of the problems I have, and one of, uh, for instance, with the witch hunt, you have people that want me to stay. They want me to fight forever. Uh, they do very well fighting. That's what they want to do, fight. A lot of companies want to fight because they make their weapons based on fighting, not based on peace. And they take care of a lot of people. I want to bring our soldiers back home. Uh, we're not a police force. We're a fighting force. We're the greatest fighting force ever. I spent two and a half trillion dollars over the last almost three years rebuilding our military. When I took it over, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. It was totally depleted. You know that. A lot of people know that. Honest people all know that. When I was thinking about having to do something, one of our generals came in to see me, and he said, sir, we don't have ammunition. I said, that's a terrible thing you just said. He said, we don't have ammunition. Now we have more ammunition than we've ever had. We have more missiles. We have more rockets. Our nuclear has been totally updated and, in some cases, new. Hopefully, to God, we never have to use it. But we have the most powerful nuclear base by far in the world. And we have things that we never had before. We have a great modern military, but that doesn't mean we're going to waste it. It doesn't mean we're going to deplete it like we did before with these crazy, endless wars. It is the divide between those whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule over others, whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule over others. But the military-industrial complex, uh, but we're looking for peace. We want peace all over. We want to solve problems. We're looking for peace. Africa right now has got problems like few people would even understand. They have things going on there that nobody could believe in this room. If you saw some of the things that I see through intelligence, what's going on in Africa, it is so sad and so vicious and violent. And we want peace. We want peace for Africa. We want peace all over the world. That's my number one goal, peace all over the world. And we're building up a tremendous military, because I really believe through strength you get, you get peace. But we're, uh, we're going to have a military like we've never had before. We've given out orders for, you know, the best fighter jets in the world, the best ships, the best everything. But uh, hopefully we'll never have to use them. That would be a dream. To buy the best stuff, to have the best stuff, to have the best equipment in the world, and to never have to use it would be a really great part of my dream. But the military-industrial complex, whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule over others, whose thirst for control, whose thirst for control. But the military-industrial complex, Africa right now has got problems like few people would even understand. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule 
over others. From Lebanon to Iraq to Yemen, Iran funds arms and trains terrorists, militias, and other extremist groups that spread destruction and chaos across the region. For decades, Iran has fueled the fires. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The Venezuelan people are starving, and their country is collapsing. Their democratic institutions are being destroyed. This situation is completely unacceptable, and we cannot stand by and watch. As a responsible neighbor and friend, we and all others have a goal. That goal is to help them regain their freedom, recover their country, and restore their democracy. Uh, we're not a police force. We're a fighting force. We're the greatest fighting force ever. Uh, we're not a police force. We're a fighting force. We're the greatest fighting force ever. Who's thirst for control? Who's thirst for control? But the military-industrial complex. The United States does not seek conflict with any other nation. We desire peace, cooperation, and mutual gain with all. But I will never fail to defend America's interests. One of the greatest security threats facing peace-loving nations today is the repressive regime in Iran. The regime's record of death and destruction is well known to us all. Not only is Iran the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism, but Iran's leaders are fueling the tragic wars in both Syria and Yemen. At the same time, the regime is squandering the nation's wealth and future in a fanatical quest for nuclear weapons and the means to deliver them. Uh, we're not a police force. We're a fighting force. We're the greatest fighting force ever. I spent two and a half trillion dollars over the last almost three years rebuilding our military. When I took it over, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. It was totally depleted. You know that. A lot of people know that. Honest people all know that. Who's thirst for control? But the military-industrial complex. Funny how that term caught on, isn't it? I, told, I tell everyone, I hated it! Somebody said, drain the swamp. I said, oh, that's so hokey. That is so terrible. I said, all right, I'll try it. So like a month ago, I said, drain the swamp. Place went crazy. I said, whoa. Watch this. Then I said it again. Then I started saying it like I meant it, right? I spent two and a half trillion dollars over the last almost three years rebuilding our military. When I took it over, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. Starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. We have implemented severe economic sanctions on the country. Hoping to free itself from sanctions, the regime has escalated its violent and unprovoked aggression. In response to Iran's recent attack on Saudi Arabian oil facilities, we just imposed the highest level of sanctions on Iran's central bank and sovereign wealth fund. All nations have a duty to act. No responsible government should subsidize Iran's bloodlust. As long as Iran's menacing behavior continues, sanctions will not be lifted. They will be tightened. Iran's leaders will have turned a proud nation into just another cautionary tale of what happens when a ruling class abandons its people and embarks on a crusade for personal power and riches. Uh, we're not a police force. We're a fighting force. We're the greatest fighting force ever. We have implemented severe economic sanctions on the country. Uh, we're not a police force. Uh, we're not a police force. Uh, but we're looking for peace. We want peace all over. We want to solve problems. We're looking for peace. I spent two and a half trillion dollars over the last almost three years rebuilding our military. When I took it over, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. 
in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals. Starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. We're building up a tremendous military because I really believe through strength you get, you get peace. But we're, uh, we're going to have a military like we've never had before. We've given out orders for you know, the best fighter jets in the world, the best ships, the best everything. But uh, hopefully we'll never have to use them. That would be a dream. To buy the best stuff, to have the best stuff, to have the best equipment in the world, and to never have to use it would be a really great part of my dream. But the military-industrial complex, whose thirst for control deludes them into thinking they are destined to rule over others. But the military-industrial complex. Starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran.